Hello everyone, Anita here and welcome to another video. As the title suggests, today we will be talking about art challenges. Um, 30 day drawing challenges to be specific. You know, be it Inktober, which is uh, approaching really quickly while I'm making this video. Uh, or Mermaid, you know, or any other challenge that you make for yourself. This video is part one of three. And in this part, we are going to cover the preparation for the challenge. And I want to start with a little disclaimer. Just because I say that it works doesn't mean that it will work for you. Um, everyone is different. Everyone will need a different approach. And uh, the way that you find out whether something works for you or not, you know, is by trying it, failing and adapting. If it works the first time, that's great. If it doesn't, you know, it's not the end of the world. Try again with a different approach. The purpose of this video is to show you different possibilities and, you know, illustrate them with my own experiences. Because I tried a lot of challenges. <laughs> yeah. End disclaimer. So you are here because you want to challenge yourself. As I'm creating this video, like I've mentioned, October is approaching. And in fact, this random drawing footage in the background is me prepping for it. I'm experimenting at the moment, trying to figure out what I'm going to be doing uh, during Inktober. So I guess we will base this video on Inktober. You know, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> we have a start. It's always start hard to, for me to start these videos. So let's see what you should think about before you start a challenge. I've learned the hard way that it's very hard to succeed without proper preparation. <laughs> I love that combination of words. I really can't stress enough how important preparation is. First of all, don't decide last minute. We are now two weeks before October and Stay on top of whatever you want to do. Decide at least a week before the start of the actual challenge. This is, of course, you know, a perfect scenario. Uh, if you decide <laughs> at the last minute, just approach it, you know, differently, accordingly to your time limitation. And basically hope for the best. <laughs> I have not been successful yet trying last minute. It doesn't mean what, like I said, it's not possible. But it's definitely much harder because you have a lot more things to do. You know, trying a 30 day challenge last minute um, is discouraged because you will most likely fail. And there is nothing wrong with failing, but we, as, as in we artists, we are prone to feeling discouraged when we fail. And it's much harder to attempt a challenge that we have previously failed. That's also a reminder for you that there is absolutely nothing wrong with failing and, you know, making mistakes in general. In our example, Inktober is creating an ink drawing. Well, it's about creating an ink drawing every day of October. So that's 31 drawings. At this point, you should decide what your personal goal is for the challenge. It doesn't have to be the same as Inktober. Maybe you've never drawn with ink before and you want to experiment. That was my case when I did Inktober in 2017. My only, <laughs> my only finished Inktober. But maybe you already know how to use ink, but you want to, you know, hone your skills. <laughs> Perhaps you want to exercise your imaginations. You know, there's, there's plenty more. Maybe you want to create a story or a series of book illustrations. Uh, maybe you want to get back into drawing after not doing this, you know, for a long time. There's absolutely nothing wrong with trying to get more attention by using the challenges hashtags. There are plenty of prompt lists available for any challenge you can imagine. A lot of them are actually endorsed by very popular artists, you know, for their their community, so they always come with designated hashtags, which is fantastic if you want to be seen. However, each of these will require a different 
preparation. So, you know, for example, you want to experiment with ink because you've never used it before. You don't know what it's about. Since you've never worked with ink before and your main goal is practice, make sure that every other aspect is familiar to you. Choose a prompt list that is very easy for you to follow, words that will immediately, you know, spring <laughs> ideas in your mind, uh, perhaps some that, you know, you already are familiar with or that you enjoy to draw. This was my case in, during October 2017. I have never used ink before and I was rather stressed out about it. So I picked witches as my topic, you know, witched over. Not only was it fun for me to draw, you know, fit my aesthetic, but it also came with that another very handy hashtag to use. Let's have a, another example. You want to exercise your imagination. Perhaps you feel stuck in the same loop and unable to draw anything new. In that case, choose a prompt list that is completely out of your comfort zone. Look for a variety of different words in the prompt list, but if you can't find any that you like, there's a little trick I like to do. Because what you want to do is for your imagination to do more than just a jump, you know, your mind will jump straight to the most common idea, the most familiar idea. What you want it to do is a salto, maybe a backflip, and just go a little bit further. You want the most original idea that you can come up with. So my tip for imagination is to never settle on the first idea if your goal is to broaden your imagination. Let's say that your prompt is star. It's very easy to draw something with just a star pattern, you know, holding a star, sitting on a star. It can be very magical, uh, but it uses the word star for what it really is as an item, <laughs> kind of. Look for different meanings of the word star. Look for, I don't know, synonyms, for example. Uh, the word star can describe a, a leading actor or, or a singer. Think of maybe different stories or um, fairy tales that have stars in them. At mythology, maybe. <laughs> Just something different that you would normally do. I mean, to be fair, if you always do a, you know, a backflip, but then you wouldn't really want to do that, so you wouldn't want to exercise your imagination, so maybe not. But doing something different that what you normally do can be fun as well. So if you're, if you always put a lot of thoughts into your ideas, actually spending some time, you know, not doing that can be beneficial to you too. You know, if you don't want to draw something completely out of your comfort zone, Perhaps set a rule for yourself to create, let's say, five to ten little thumbnail sketches and then choose one of those to make an illustration out of. Now, that seems like a lot of work for me, so <laughs> if you do that, make sure that you have a lot of time allotted, but let's, we will talk about that a little bit later. My point is, stretch your imagination. It doesn't matter how vague the, the star <laughs> concept is. Whatever star makes you draw, you know, that's, that's inspiration, really. And as a reminder, I'm assuming that in this case, you already have some idea about the medium you want to use. I really do not advise learning how to use a, a medium, in this case, ink, and coming up with new ideas every single day. Like, whatever your goal is, that is what you will be spending 30 days doing. You have to set realistic goals and really prepare them in order to finish. Think about it as running a marathon, you know? You are not going to run a marathon without practicing first, right? The goal of the marathon is not learning how to run and at the same time completing 300 kilometer distance, right? That's just silly. So let's go back to example one and talk more about the preparation. 
So your goal is set, it is to learn and practice painting with ink in our example number one. You want to paint one finished drawing or you know illustration per day. The next thing to look is your time actually. How much time do you have during the day to finish this illustration? Will you have time for the next 31 days to do so? Do you plan to have weekends off? Um, do you plan to have breaks? Do you have school, work, um, children to take care of? Something that needs your constant attention? All these are affecting how you prepare for the challenge. I really firmly believe that you can work around anything as long as you have real, real, oh, realistic, goodness, realistic expectations and enough time to prepare yourself. Let's say you can have about one hour per day and you will need to have weekends free, right? Now you can just say that you will not be painting 31 illustrations during October. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. In fact, that is what I will probably be doing this year because I just don't have the time. Nothing wrong with that, right? So instead of making 31 illustrations, you can paint five illustrations per week. So that's, let's say, around 20. Am I counting that right? <laughs> yes. So it's around 20 or maybe you will have one a week that is much more detailed and bigger because that is what you want to do. Nothing wrong with that. However, in this video, we are discussing how to finish something every day. Everything I'm writing here can be adjusted to fit your needs, fit your needs. Goodness, <laughs> I really can't English today. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's pretty much the same process. Um, what I'm trying to say, whether you're making 31 illustrations or four, it really is just the same process. You just adjust accordingly. Now, why am I stressing it so much? The reason why you want to start preparing earlier is that you can cut as much unnecessary work from the time allocated to your painting. You want to just sit and paint. You have, let's say, an hour. You know, you don't want to prepare to paint for half an hour. This means that you will need to prepare enough supplies to last 31 days. Pre-cut your paper, you know, prepare brushes or pens or whatever you're using. Make sure you have enough ink. Look through your prompts. Create 31 sketches, and yes, I mean that, create 31 sketches. You want to have everything prepared up to the stage where you just sit down and, and paint. That takes time, you know, <laughs> and that is why I really don't recommend starting last minute because you will be doing that during the challenge. You have to think about it as doing something in a factory. I know it's a bit silly comparison. But in a factory, you will often do one task at a time for every single item you make and then switch a machine and then that next machine is going to do the, another step for as many items as you have. Because if you were to do one item at a time, it will collectively take more time <laughs> because you will have to switch the machines constantly. In a very weird way, painting is, is very similar. If you pre-cut your paper, so in one sitting you cut 31 sheets of paper, it's going to cost you less time than if you cut your paper every single day. Because when you do a task and you get in a rhythm, you spend much less time thinking about it and those really repetitive tasks go you know, they go much faster. But if one day you say you're going to cut your paper, make your sketch, make, um, think an idea of an idea, that will take much more time in comparison that if you just do it uh, before. And trust me on that, I actually counted that. <laughs> I counted during the October 2017. I remember it very clearly because I wanted to compare when I was making my first illustration, I just did everything from scratch and I, I kind of uh, counted how much time it took me to paint an entire illustration. And then I multiplied it for by 31. I know I am pretty weird, 
<laughs> but it kind of made more sense, you know, for me back then. And then I just pre-cut, for example, the paper and counted how much time that took me to pre-cut the rest of the paper. And when I made the sketches, I counted how much time it would take me to make one sketch. I multiplied that because I was doing them in one sitting. And I've once I've added all these numbers up, and I really don't remember how that how much that was, but it turned out it was much less time to do it in bulk <laughs> rather than to do it separately. It might seem like cheating to you, but it is preparation. Everything depends on what your goal is. So in the second example, the idea, the sketch is what you want to be practicing, right? That's your goal. Your goal is to exercise your imagination. So there is no point to it if you just prepare everything beforehand. I would advise to set aside more time for sketching and coming up with ideas than for finishing an illustration. In fact, you can also finish the illustration during a different challenge. I've noticed that some artists will use September for sketching and, you know, preparing their line arts. And then they use October to finish the illustrations. And that is, in my opinion, a very wise use of the time and also a very good example of doing one thing, you know, one challenge at a time. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing things slowly. We are recently almost bombarded with fast art you know, short videos, the sort of, you know, like tap, tap on the blank sheet of paper. And then, you know, the third tap turns it into a painting. The expectation is that every artwork should be made fast, but that's really not the case. Of course, you know, the whole idea of a 30 day drawing challenge, I'm keep saying 30 day because 31 day is a mouthful. Okay. <laughs> a 30 day drawing challenge. You know, the purpose of it is that you create art faster, uh, faster than normal, but you are not expected to create a big detailed oil painting every day because that's just silly. You know, these two examples can be applied to everything. <laughs> you have to look at your goal to kind of know how your preparation will be. You have to think what you have to prepare in order to achieve your goal. So. If your goal is to post something every day to use, you know, the power of the hashtag, <laughs> you know, you, you should find a prompt list that is very popular and, and liked by a lot of people, you know, like cats and, and witches, Halloween stuff, uh, Disney stuff. Um, th the thing about these hashtags is that they are very oversaturated, but Inktober pulls a lot more people into, into those hashtags. So you kind of have more chance to be seen. That's why that many people are doing the, the challenge. You know, you'll still have to make preparations for every day. The more you do beforehand, the easier it will be to fight the fatigue, which you will get a hundred percent, no matter how well you prepare. It's absolutely inevitable. <laughs> Even if you just make a, a doodle, you know, uh, but that's a topic for for part two, so I'll talk about it later. Another idea is to adjust the size of your illustration to the time you can allot to the challenge. The less time you have, the smaller the illustration. You know, you know, you, know, you won't be making a painting full of detail every day if you have a half an hour of time, right? Although I have to say that um, I, I just got an idea making like a series of little thumb sized painting with lots of details, you know, that that's going to look amazing because you will have 31 of them <laughs> and everything you put in like a series of paintings is going to look amazing no matter what you do, trust me. But yeah, in any way, <laughs> you can't put your life on hold. Doing a challenge like that at the same time as working is extremely hard. And I mean, working or going to school, anything. It's really fine to be ambitious, but it's smart to be realistic. You're not settling. Okay. It is perfect. It's just ideally you want to find that golden middle between enough or rather ambition 
and what's possible. <laughs> you want to find that, that middle point. But it's like perfectly okay if you just don't figure it out. Don't figure it out immediately. Wow. I also accepted that even after so many years, my English will never be perfect. <laughs> so during my Inktober 2017 series, I knew that I wanted to create a series of fairly similar illustrations. And I also wanted to record the process of making them. And I wanted to post videos the next day. There is a playlist if you are <laughs> interested. I managed like 20 something videos before I, you know, cracked inevitably. I made a lot of bad decisions during uh, Inktober 2017. Uh, you know, once again, more on that later. However, the only reason why I finished the challenge, you know, at all, was because I prepared everything before it started. I pre cut my paper. I decided to have the size to be A5, which is smaller than my preferred A4. However, A5 is easier to paint on and record. I've decided on the prompt list and I sketched out every which I wanted to paint. And that's another thing. I remember that I, I think I pulled from like two different prompt lists. You know, feel free to just mix and match if you don't feel like a full prompt list is to your liking. So then I copied those sketches, you know, perfectly clean to my pre-cut paper. So all I had to do during, on, you know, on the day of painting was to save that day's paper to the board and paint. For me, the challenge was learning how to use ink. And, you know, I probably should have stayed on that. But I was overly ambitious and I wanted to make a series of illustrations, which I possibly wanted to make an art book out of. And I wanted to make 31 videos on for YouTube because I was into YouTube back then very much, you know? I had three goals for one challenge. It really, really wasn't smart. Now, another challenge I finished quite recently, it was the Mermaid uh, 2021. I approached the preparation differently because that challenge was digital. I didn't have to pre-cut my paper. Uh, I didn't have to prepare supplies, <laughs> but I still prepared different things. I made a separate folder for the mermaid files. I set up a canvas in the size that I needed so that all of them matched. I copied it enough times. <laughs> And I renamed everything according to the day and prompt, you know? I set the background in each canvas. Basically what applies in traditional drawing applies here as well. I just wanted to be able to, you know, sit and paint. I didn't want to look through my prompt list every day. I didn't want to copy my sketches every day. I remember I actually had only like two thirds of the sketches at the start of Mermaid because of um, personal reasons. Um, but because I, of how prepared I was, I just managed to add a sketch or two every day. And by, you know, I, like a third of the challenge, I was done with all my preparations. That's also something you can do. So that was a lot of talking. <laughs> Let's quickly recap that, you know, a little TLDR, if you will. So first, decide what your goal is for the challenge. Are you doing it to practice a skill? Are you doing it for popularity or exposure? Are you illustrating a book? Making an art book? An art book, goodness. <laughs> there are no wrong answers here. Just be clear on what it is that you want to do because your preparation will depend on that. Decide how many pieces, that's number two. Decide how many pieces you want to make and how often. You know, in this case, we are talking about 30 day challenges but 365 day challenges and you know 52 week challenges will require prep too just differently so number three is how to decide how much time you have for each piece every day do you have responsibilities do you have children do you have do you go to school do you have work are you tired after work do you have a lot of homework is there a way for you to create during work or school, 
maybe during the commute, your morning coffee, <laughs> anything. I used to come up with ideas during my commute to work. I planned my pieces during my breaks in my head. And in the evening, I knew exactly what I wanted to draw. So number four, make a list of supplies that you need. Make sure you have enough to finish the challenge. This is especially important for, you know, 30 day challenges that are very supply heavy because there is so little room for, for error. You can just run out and buy any. Maybe you can, but let's just play it safe here. And last but not least, prepare everything needed to complete the challenge. Pre-cut your paper, prepare your sketches, do your line arts. All you want to do really on the day is to sit and paint. Everything depends on the goal, of course, of your challenge, but I talked so much about it, you know, before, so I'm not going to elaborate here. If you want to know more, just go back and watch it again. <laughs> and that's pretty much it, you know, happy planning, guys. If you have any questions or suggestions or maybe different ideas on how to approach a 30-day drawing challenge, leave them in the comment section. Everyone has, you know, their, their own ideas and approach and sharing helps others figure out what works, you know, best for them. I always read about many different ways to do the same thing until I find something that works for me. Or I just pick, you know, bits and apply them to my situation. Or I simply just get inspiration for, you know, doing something else. You know, my point is, there is no good way, or rather no one good way <laughs> to do something. <laughs> yeah, right. So, um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in part two. Bye!